the topic of my talk is large area electronic skin and before I start uh, uh, my lecture I would like to introduce my team members who, who uh, without their inputs whatever I'm presenting would have uh, little meaning so I want to thank my group members uh, my group is Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group in University of Glasgow and our focus is mainly in four, these four themes. One is uh, multifunctionalities using high mobility materials such as graphene, uh, ultra thin uh, chips and uh, silicon nanowires and printing silicon nanowires on large area flexible substrates. And we orient all these technology towards robotics and prosthetics and you will see this in my, my presentation today. So, uh, when it comes to robotics, uh, what this is what we do, electronic skin from humans to humanoids. We, we started, I started learning from uh, the tactile skin in, in humans and then I started, uh, you know, uh, using this knowledge to develop electronic skin for, for robots and covering entire body of robot with electronic skin. And in the process, we realized that this technology could be used uh, back to improving our own lives through wearable systems. And this is what you see here, large number of sensors that could go around uh, non-invasively, they could be used to monitor uh, health either in real time or one of signals from different parts of body. So that, that's how it connects to wearable systems as well. Uh, my group has access to these uh, two major facilities in the University of Glasgow. What, one is uh, James Watt Nano Fabrication Centre, which is one of the leading nano fabrication facility in, in UK and Glasgow Electronics Design Center. Coming to outline of this talk, I'll, I have divided my talk in three parts. Why electronic skin, flexible electronics technologies available to us uh, uh, to develop electronic skin and then I will conclude my talk and I'll also present my vision. This slide shows an experiment, a simple experiment, putting, uh, consider you are putting your hands on ice block and, and then trying to object a, a, a trying to grab an object nearby. Very likely it won't happen, it won't, you, you, will, you will fail to do, do this because your sensory feelings have, have lost. You have lost your sensory feeling uh, after some time and this is the state of robotics and prosthetics today. There is no sensory feelings, there are no tactile skin in machines. And how can we expect these machines to, to, to interact with humans safely? So this is why electronic skin or tactile skin is important this is the current state of automation, robots working in cages, no humans are allowed in, in these cages and if they, if by chance they enter into these cages, that's something uh, unpleasant news we come across. Uh, this was robot kills men, uh, men at Volkswagen plant that was last year in Germany. There was one similar incident in Gurgaon in India and there was similar incident in 80s in Japan. There are not many inc incidents that, ha that, that have happened so far. but the way industrial landscape is changing, the way uh, uh, robots are entering in our own life, this is going to uh, uh, more and more interaction between humans and, and robots. This is something uh, we want to prevent. And not only this, uh, if you look at electronic skin and tactile scale, sensing, it is needed in number of number of areas. Real world is really rich. You look around and you feel yourself how many parameters you can detect just by touching. Uh, there are a large number of these parameters and then the, there is question why if we can feel these parameters machines are not able to do and then it, it, uh, it leads to the, the motivation why we need to develop electronic skin. Either it, whether it is laparoscopy experiment or Da Vinci robots where there is no tactile feedback and doctors are just relying on visual feedback or, or even uh, unstructured environment such as robots working in remote, uh, remote planets where electronic skin a different variant such as using proximity sensors etc covering uh, the entire body of robot to improve reliability of the whole system rather than a real physical interaction. So that could be a very different paradigm but electronic skin over large area is needed and in all these scenarios that you see current scenarios as well as future scenarios given here where you have something like avatar like concept uh, here and here and, uh, and neural control of limbs which are all connected to somehow connected to avatar like concepts. So in all these tactile feedback is needed and tactile feedback is needed from large areas. It's not just fingertips that we typically talk about, so it's entire body. And 
and that's uh, that's another example why tactile skin or electronic skin over large large area is needed if you look at this this robot sitting here uh, on the wall if this task is to jump off the wall then robot would rely on feedback from entire body rather than hands and another example could be uh, a robot lifting like like we lift heavy sandbag so if you are lifting sandbag you don't need uh, fingers you are just relying on contact feedback from large body parts and not only this uh, this this tactile skin is quite quite challenging to develop unlike other sensory modalities such as vision which is quite central you have two eyes at specific location tactile skin is distributed all over body and when hands are moving so these sensors are moving in space as well so which complicates the whole thing and and these sensors are capable of measuring different parameters whether it's a glossy surface textured surface hard rocky material soft material or cold or hot hot objects so there are a number of parameters that electronic skin can can should be able to detect our skin can detect that if you are familiar with robotics uh, the another motivation why electronic skin is needed is given in this slide that's the current state if you want to capture pose and, and write motion guidance algorithm so what happens is uh, there are markers that are uh, placed on on joints and you capture the uh, pose of user with these mi markers and then there's a target pose you compare these two and minimize the error and that's how you develop a motion guidance algorithm but in the process a lot of information between two markers is lost so if there was a skin in all in, in the throughout this process the skin would have given us one uh, much richer information and that information would have uh, then advanced the the uh, the research in, in robotics through advanced motion guidance algorithms all right so with this i come to the technological part i started working on this technology which is phosphate piezoelectric oxide semiconductor field effect transistor and idea here was to to use transistor as a sensor and what i did in this case i i deposited pvdf uh, polymer copolymer of pvdf on gate area of device and when you apply force on this the, 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 there is a charge which is produced proportional to this force i i apologize for this this thing okay so there is a it goes back anyway so there is a charge uh, produced proportional to to this uh, uh, this force and this charge gets reflected into the channel now this is an interesting way of converting a transistor into a sensor and another interesting aspect of this approach is that you can you can think of system on chip but one problem with this approach is that it is still planar electronics i wanted to put this chip on the fingertip of this icub uh, robot icub which was in my previous lab at iit in genoa but because it was a planar chip we couldn't uh, use it for fingertip it was placed it was used elsewhere but not the intended uh, location so the the research in this this field advanced with cmos implementation with more electronics on the chip as we as we thought but without uh, without being flexible so the point is if i want to use this chip my robot should be like this which is not uh, close to reality robots are that we are developing are uh, they, they they look like this they are they have curved surfaces they have large area and for this either you have to change the 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 world or you change the electronics and i think simple answer is we need to change the electronics electronics planar electronics is it has done a fantastic job so far but now we want to also uh, get more out of what what can be Oh, 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 what was possible with electronics and flexible electronics is is one option uh, with us uh, i looked into the 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 different aspects of tactile skin large area fingertips and different type of sensors mechanical aspect electrical electrical aspects manufacturability aspect all these aspects i looked into and what i noticed was most important or the current requirement was conformability flexibility stretchability shrinkability compliant etc all these features in order to 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 uh, make robots safer to interact with and not only just robotics there are number of other applications that you can think of for example you already see in market bendable tv which is available now 
So there is uh, this evolution from, from large size of display to, to planar dis the, a, a thin display and now bendable display and future could be rollable display. So there is evolution is pretty much clear that is the next thing which is happening. And so flexible electronics is not just about robotics or prosthetics, it is also about many applications including uh, uh, the television or mobile phones as well as solar cells. Uh, what I mean by conformable electronics or, or, or large area electronics here means a set of multiple functionalities, different type of sensors, electronics all integrated on flexible substrates. Either they are on same substrate or they are on a stack of substrate with one functionality on, on each layer. From technology, techno, technology point of view, it is difficult to have all materials or all functionalities on same substrate. So this is an alternative for that. For example, some materials may be processed, they can be printed at 100 degrees, 100 degrees Celsius, whereas other materials would require 1000 degrees Celsius. To overcome those technological bottlenecks, this is an alternative. So you can think of one functionality, I have, give, I have included this as an example, so flexible energy harvester which may be thermoelectric energy harvester close to body and you want to take advantage of temperature difference between body and ambient. That could be just here, there could be electronics in between, active or passive electronics, uh, the, these components in this layer and the external layer could be the touch sensors or temperature sensors and this is another variant of, this makes another variant of skin. Coming to the second part, so from first part it is clear what was the, why electronic skin is needed and why it is needed on large area. The next part is what are potential technology, technologies available for us to, to achieve the, the flexibility, conform, conformability or stretchability, all these features that I mentioned in previous slide. I started looking into the materials and methods and I noticed actually there are a number of range of materials and methods that you can explore and they could be used for flexible electronics. In fact, literally all materials that we have used for planar electronics uh, by innovative uh, methods you can use them for flexible electronics. And two broad categories are organic and inorganic semiconductors. This table I have compared uh, organics, I have also included here graphene and CNT because these are high mobility materials, uh, but um, they, because they are carbon based so I, I club them together. Then these are inorganics and I have included within this um, metal oxides as well. Number of attributes you can compare based on these attributes, which one stands where. I wouldn't say that uh, silicon is better than organic because there are areas where organic has uh, advantages in terms of cost and there are areas where silicon has advantage in terms of high performance. We noticed from our plenary, plenary talk today, zero power, RF communication, IoT kind of applications, all these applications require high performance at some point, so silicon becomes inevitable at, at those points. So, our research is primarily based on high mobility materials, so silicon uh, based flexible electronics as well as we work on graphene based uh, flexible electronics. The reason being simple, if you look at mobility, this is 1000, so if organic based transistor, organic semiconductor based transistors is giving us a switching frequency of in the order of kilohertz, simply this goes to uh, megahertz. And in case of IoT where you are talking about 300 megahertz to 500 megahertz more or less in that range, that is the answer. So this high mobility and high mobility is not the only criteria for high performance. We have to look into the technology also, printing for example uh, leads to high ch uh, large channel length, large channel length means again poor performance. So you have to then think of how can we use existing infrastructure, existing micro nanotechnology to get the channel lengths that we get with uh, with current silicon, I am not talking about nano scale but at least micron scale. So that technology if we can bring in and a combination of printing and, and existing technology will be an ideal solution in this case. In terms of application suitability of these material depends on what you want to do. In this slide I have included, uh, this is the switching frequency, this is mobility and this slide I have taken courtesy from Arokia. Uh, uh, my collaborator, I work with him uh, and if you, if you look at uh, this, this, this is the low mobility, displays etc. Look at your computer screen, refresh rate of 60, 60 to 70 hertz is sufficient and that is where uh, 
organic we see organic led for example tv based on organic led but behind the tv is the electronics high performance electronics that requires large drive currents and that's where silicon uh, comes into picture again so that's where we have nanowire etc all cmos etc it's it's all here and if you look at these applications that we talk about for future distributed sensors, distributed uh, networks, wireless communication, etc., we we are talking about high frequency switching frequency again. So uh, a combination of these materials is what we need. I started looking into, as I said, I started looking into materials uh, and methods, and my my initial interest was from robotics point of view. I did a, a tactile sensing chip for robotics application. There were uh, naturally problems. It was not conforming to shape of the uh, of the curved surf surface that we come across, uh, and that that led to evolution in my own research. I started uh, doing this flexible electronics then, and first thing that was uh, I was I was interested in how can we use existing technology to get things going in robotics. So planar component but they are integrated on non planar surfaces and then uh, we, we put this this whole thing on on robots body and this section is all about uh, this approach the work goes back to uh, quite long time back almost two decades ago when Vladimir started looking into this and I'm not sure if he's here but he must be around if you want to talk to him uh, he's here today so uh, he he started looking into this and he covered uh, manip manipulators with with skin and demonstrated that though they, they were proximity sensors there was no real contact but in that application in that case idea was to to avoid collision between human and robot so there were ir sensors proximity sensors were were uh, taken here they were stitched to flexible substrates what we did was was uh, uh, different we, we use flexible printed circuit boards and again flexible pr printed circuit board is there is nothing new it is well known it for uh, if you look at your computer ribbons etc they are all flexible printed circuit boards but what we have done here is we used uh, sensors on top side of these triangles and on the back side we had all electronics and luckily we found capacitance to digital converter luckily at that time iPhone came and that chip AD7147 also came with iPhone we started using that and this was funded by European Commission uh, uh, project was RoboScan. So here you see iCub uh, without skin, iCub with skin and iCub with nicely packaged skin with uh, which is now available in different colors. The, the other point that we started looking into is you come across different surfaces. It's not always curvy along one axis. It may be curved along two axes. You may come across sphere. You may come across cylinder. And you have to cover all these surfaces with skin. And that's over, over large area. So coverage becomes an, uh, it becomes an issue at some point. And we looked into this. And the idea was pretty simple, quite on the lines of Fuller map that you come across. You take sphere take triangular projections and make 2D layout. Once you have 2D layout, these are all triangles, these are set of triangles, 21, 22 triangles that you come across uh, uh, in this case. So all these triangles and then you can cover maximum area of, of this surface when it is 2D. And then rebuild the whole 3D system, 3D stuff again. Now once you do that 3D thing, it becomes a general solution. We started with iCub, we, we eventually implemented the skin on other robots also. So a skin which was a general solution and th there is nothing new again. Uh, these things are known, triangulation technique is known in computer imaging. So those familiar with 3D imaging, they would know what triangulation technique is, how triangulation technique is used to cover, uh, make 3D images. But that was in this case innovative part was, it was implemented all in hardware. And these are some pictures here. Uh, uh, this shows the, uh, the conformability and uh, 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 conforming to different shapes. I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is for going forward. I don't know why. So this is the, this is the one sensor patch. And uh, uh, the back side where we have all chips integrated. So this, these are different figures showing uh, the, the technology. And then implementation of this technology on iCub 
on Casper, on now, which is a commercial commercial robot, as well as uh, it was given to uh, Shrunk Robotic also. And in terms of capability, what it did uh, is shown here. It enabled large area, uh, uh, enabled us to ex exploit large areas on robots' body to carry out tasks. Something we also do a, almost on daily basis. And this led to change in research by paradigm within in the field of robotics. Before this, before skin was available, people were uh, dealing with hands, dexterous manipulation with hands, uh, grasping with hands, etc. So that was a new paradigm that you start exploiting whole body to, to carry out tasks. And skin was quite essential for that. And I must say that this is not the final solution. There are still many challenges here. Um, and we can talk about those challenges at length. Uh, given the time, I will move to the next part. But if you are interested, we can speak about the challenges. And we are trying to overcome through, through new solutions. The next is organic semiconductor. We started working on graphene. And this is one paper we published recently. And it was quickly picked up because uh, the, the process we developed was, was quite low cost process. And uh, it was, it was uh, graphene was trans transferred on large area. And for large area, I mean here A4 size, which is about 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter. We tested this uh, extensively and we found it was a high quality graphene that can be transferred over large area. Problem with graphene is when you transfer it, when you grow it on polished copper, you may try, you may, you may get best polished uh, copper. You, so you still have these, these sort of uh, indentations left on the surface. And as long as this is on copper, it's fine, it is working well. But when you transfer them on flexible sur substrates, these lines become cracks on flexible surface. And if they are cracks, then, then there's a challenge uh, in terms of how do you, uh, do you use it for electronics or, or sensors. You cannot make nice design layouts, etc., if material itself is not present all over the surface. So that's a challenge. And uh, this is uh, the copper we, we just used. Uh, copper that is used in lithium ion battery it's much better polished than uh, than the uh, best polished uh, copper that you you get in in the in market and what we got was uh, quite quite good uh, graphene as you see here uh, i better not use this one uh, so that's uh, uh, the graphene and we tested we use this now graphene we use it to develop a new version of electronic skin and we have tested it extensively uh, this experiment shows a large number of cycles we, we tested. It bends and bends and you know we, we tested over more than 10,000 cycles and, yes. and, the, and the, the change is just 2.5 percent. So that's, that's, that's uh, uh, a nice uh, interesting result that we got. Coming to next part and this is the last part of, of uh, all we do in terms of uh, various materials and methods for flexible electronics is the ultra thin chips. As I said, at some point you need high performance electronic when you look from the entire system point of view. Sensors and from sensors you need uh, signal processing and then signal processing on you move on. You have uh, entire, you know, you talk about the data acquisition, transmission, etc. At some point you need high performance electronics and compact electronics, which means we go back again to, to the silicon. But in this case we still need flexibility and that, that is the motivation of ultra thin flexible chips. This is the process we developed wafer scale uh, ultra thin uh, the chips and this is uh, we simply use chemical process to, to thin down the wafer and for the first time we also use transfer printing method which is which is I'll explain uh, in, in next slides which is which I was reported so far for nanoscale wires but in this case we did four inch wafer that you see here we did uh, for the four inch wafer and that's uh, the chips after different size of chips after they were transferred to flexible subset no curls here you see uh, typically you come across they will bend polyamide or substrate will bend but that was uh, because we chose material that has that had a very close match with the uh, temperature coefficient matches matched close with silicon and this is the result so this is two centimeter uh, by 1.5 centimeter and it's it's quite flexible and now we are working towards the, the packaging, how to integrate, how to put pads on, on the chip. So we are working on these, these directions. 
uh, but that's as I said was was compact electronics high performance electronics I'm again going back to large area now what we need is large area high performance electronics and that takes me to the approach which is nanowire how to print nanowire based nanowire from silicon and printing these nanowires on on large areas uh, this was initially started at UIUC John Rogers started this work but what we are doing is different we are not horizontally transferring it we are growing wires either using top down or bottom up strategy and then printing them using in a roll to roll fashion and that's the innovation there so in this what what happens is you realize nano wires the challenge with silicon is that some of the uh, processing steps require high temperature more than 1000 so you carry out all those steps on the wafer and then use carrier to transfer it to flexible substrates and this is uh, uh, the way you can transfer on on large area you just pick wires it's more like a stamping technique and then you can place them wherever they are needed and we got some devices from them so we tested single device as well as uh, multiple array using multiple arrays as device and we also use printing technology to print uh, metal lines so that was was a kind of merge between printing and silicon based technology as i was mentioning we are now working on the advanced version of large area electronic skin using this approach which will have uh, uh, electronics uh, on the back plane and it will be covered by by uh, the uh, transducer material these are different configurations that we are trying very similar to POSFET that I explained in my previous slide in the in the first slides and uh, from nanowire point of view we use uh, bottom up and top down this is metal assisted chemical etching strategy so uh, the wires that you see here is they are quite parallel but in this case they are not parallel and we then print them on again uh, using same technique we print them on uh, flexible substrates and sticky non-sticky areas are defined by layout of your electronics so that's what we do and also while printing we take care of pressure etc that is applied because that plays an important role in the alignment of wires so this brings me to the last part which is conclusion i would like to conclude my talk uh, for safer human machine interaction robots in, and in general any inanimate object need to feel objects around them High performance, flexible and conformable electronics is needed for safe robotics and advanced prosthetics. <laughs> Silicon based uh, electronic solutions along with organic semiconductors approaches will enable new class of applications and some of these are, are given here. It could be uh, consumer electronics, aviation, space electronics, robotics, life sciences, power, military ap application, etc. Finally, just one last idea of our vision, we would like to see electronics as simple as as sketching electronics and that's what we have done in our we have shown this in our lab uh, by sketching electronics using conductive ink and controlling prosthetic hand which was also printed in my lab using 3d printers that's the state of the art robotics uh, uh, prosthetic device you have they come up come up with apps like this and you can control wirelessly uh, uh, hand and we did this on paper and again we control wirelessly and but the difference is 30,000 versus 300 pounds so that's a huge difference and uh, this is uh, one initiative we, we have I can we can talk about it I would like to acknowledge various uh, collaborators funders etc and thank you very much <laughs>